So joining us now to discuss all of that that's ongoing and the situation is in Iceland is Associate Professor of Geophysics at California State University, Northridge, Dr. Julian Lozos. And Dr. Lozos, thank you so much for being with us. Experts, they're warning that there's this particular volcano that could you know, last for weeks on end. What in mind are the biggest risks associated with that volcano? So definitely the, the biggest risk with a volcano like this is actually the lava flows. Um, so in this case, uh, this is not a, an explosive kind of volcano. Like if you've been following the news stories of the eruptions in Iceland over the past three years and all of those really spectacular photos, you've seen a lot of lava fountains and flows and things that are kind of spraying and, and uh, sort of making rivers, but not actually exploding into the air. Um, and in this case, the kind of magma down there um, is going to be very similar to what uh, came out of the ground with the Fagadalskjot eruptions in the past three years. And uh, so that kind of stuff, just it's too runny to really explode. But that also means that it is able to, once it's out of the ground, it can flow um, generally downhill, but basically wherever it wants. Um, so the biggest threat here is uh, that this uh, volcanic fissure will open up inside the city limits of Grindavik and uh, run over people's homes and uh, schools and nursing homes. I know we're particularly affected by the shaking. Um, also the risk to uh, the roads uh, connecting Grindavik and the capital region to the rest of the Rakhines Peninsula. Um, and there's still um, some risk, depending on where that fissure opens, if it does, uh, to the power plant at Svartsengi, which provides power to like 30,000 people around there. Well, you know, uh, I mean... Explosion? Not so much. <laughs> yeah, no, no, ex ex exactly. And you know, I mean, Iceland is the land of fire and ice, so they are no stranger truly yeah. to volcanic activity. But I do think it's important to go back to the 2010 eruption. I think a lot of people are trying to make these comparisons. But I also think it's important to show the differences. And you would probably know much more on that, especially since it caused major flight disruptions as we're approaching the holiday season with Christmas and other major holidays right around the corner. So uh, the 2010 eruption of Eyjafjallajökull, um, it's, it's a fundamentally different kind of volcano. Um, so there's a bunch of different kinds of volcanoes that are basically determined by what kind of lava they have um, and how sticky or runny it is. And uh, the lava that Eyjafjallajökull has is sticky enough that in order for it to get out of the volcano, it actually has to explode. Whereas something like with Fagrasjav or uh, what's happening near uh, Grindavik now, it once there's a crack that gets down to where it is, it can just kind of ooze out, like in the, the picture you're showing right now. Um, so really the, the issue with uh, 2010 was that um, both that there was an eruption that was more explosive just because of the kind of lava that Eyjafjallajökull has, but also uh, the fact that it's under a glacier. And so a lot of water um, melted from that glacier and kind of went down into the volcano and the steam kind of helped the ash spread further. And so that explosion, plus the steam with the ash, plus the direction of the winds at that time, just kind of bullseyed all that ash onto Europe. Um, but something like happening on the Reykjanes Peninsula really should not do that. It's just not the, the right chemistry. Or, and there's also no glacier. Dr. Lozos, you do such a good job. You're looking at something that's so intricate, and it can be difficult to understand, and you're breaking it down with ease. And I want to ask you about your own expertise with Iceland and their earthquakes. It happened to you last summer, right before there was that eruption. Can you tell us more about that experience? Yeah, so uh, last summer I had the, um, I guess the the luck or, or not luck, depending on who you ask, that I was already in Iceland just doing a, a, a road trip around the country, um, doing the whole ring road. Um, and right when we got to Reykjavik um, was when the earthquake storm leading up to the 2022 eruption um, started. And it was really, you know, as an earthquake scientist, I'm admittedly usually pretty excited to feel earthquakes. But even from downtown Reykjavik, which is about 35 kilometers outside of where the eruption eventually started. Um, it was enough earthquakes that I was starting to feel pretty freaked out and pretty nervous. Um, and then what happened after that was, you know, there was a night full of really intense earthquake activity, and then it calmed down for a day or so, and the eruption started uh, the day after that, which is why even though now the seismicity near Grindavik has slowed down quite a lot compared to over the weekend, it's still that, you know, potential calm before the storm, like we saw before all three of the um, other recent eruptions.
Well, we certainly appreciate you joining us here on Fox Weather. I know volcanology might go over our heads just a bit, so it's great to have it all broken down. Associate Professor at California State University Northridge, Dr. Julian Lozos, again, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.